everyone has their favorite Pepperidge Farm cookies or crackers, but how much do you know about the company that specializes in these European-style treats? From goldfish to Milano cookies, here's everything you're hungry to know. Mmm, goldfish crackers. There's nothing more American than those, right? Got strange customs here. Eat little tiny goldfish. Yeah, a special breed raised only on Pepperidge Farm. Wrong. According to the Daily Meal, goldfish were invented in Switzerland by a man named Oscar J. Cambly. In fact, his company still sells the little fish-shaped crackers, and they're clearly labeled Goldfish, the original. It's very similar to the cheesy puffy cracker that's sold in the States, though the American version is a bit more successful. According to Business Wire, Pepperidge Farm produces an incredible 142 billion goldfish crackers every year. Sure, everyone has their own individual tastes when it comes to cookies, but no one can deny that Pepperidge Farm Milanos are a huge favorite. Someone's been sneaking my Milano cookies. Tim? Is he capable of indulging himself the way I do? Oddly enough, these chocolate-filled sandwich cookies almost never happened. According to Slate, the original version of the Milano was a cookie called the Naples. It was quite similar to the Milano that we know and love, but with only the bottom cookie and a chocolate layer. Once the cookies started shipping into the southern states, though, the heat led to melted chocolate and a bona fide cookie catastrophe. They added the other half of the cookie sandwich to hold everything in place, called it a Milano, and created a classic. Disaster averted. Goldfish smiles were added in 1997, a change made 35 years after they were first introduced to the American public. Everybody's on the lookout for Boomer, the flavor-blasted goldfish. Characteristics, fish shape, sunglasses, and a smart mouth little smirk. According to the New York Daily News, Pepperidge Farm reportedly hired, quote, a smile psychologist to perfect the aesthetic of their grinning fish crackers. The wholesome snack that smiles back until you bite their heads off. A human smile is as much in the eyes as it is in the mouth, and since the fish couldn't have the same crinkled eyes and happy face that humans do, Pepperidge Farm wanted to make sure their smiles looked like genuinely happy smiles. Did you know goldfish crackers were Julia Child's favorite snack? According to Mental Floss, she loved them so much she even served them as an appetizer during her Thanksgiving dinners. Child thought the crackers were perfect for wetting people's appetites before a big meal, according to the Washington Post's Mary Beth Albright. This is a great trick that Julia Child used. It's one of her favorite snacks. Goldfish crackers and an upside-down martini. Mary Bergen, who worked with Child on her show Baking with Julia, wrote a touching tribute for Child on what would have been her 100th birthday. According to PBS, Bergen fondly remembered Julia Child's bowl of Pepperidge Farm goldfish crackers, which were even served at memorials after her death. Pepperidge Farm started with bread, but you probably know the company best for its delicious cookies. But if you ever wondered why Pepperidge Farm cookies have such a European flair, there's a good reason. They're completely European. According to Slate, Margaret Rudkin visited Europe in the hopes of finding inspiration for her cookie line. When she stopped by Brussels, she apparently found exactly what she was looking for at the De La Coeur cookie factory. In fact, she absolutely fell in love with the cookie's delicate, elegant design. De La Coeur wasn't selling cookies in the US at the time. Somehow, Rudkin convinced the company to give her some of the recipes and send some bakers to Pepperidge Farm to provide a crash course in making them. Now that De La Coeur is selling in the US, though, they think of Pepperidge Farm as competition. Whoops. Pepperidge Farm really does exist, and technically, there are two. The first one was the sprawling farm and well-appointed mansion owned by company founder Margaret Fogarty Rudkin. We lived on a property that was actually called Pepperidge Farm for the Pepperidge tree. But the mill on the brand's logo is actually the Wayside Inn Grist Mill in Massachusetts, and it was built by Henry Ford. By 1952, the mill was employed by Pepperidge Farm and became the image of the company. The Wayside in Grist Mill is still open if you're suddenly compelled to see this place for yourself. Hard to choose. That's some problem. You try them. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.